Hey everyone, welcome to another double edition of group text and behind the velvet rope. We actually have a lot to talk about, even though it's summer, where usually it's absolutely dead, but our celebs have been out and about and causing drama. Don't you just love it? It never slows down for us. It never does, and we always are like, oh, there's nothing happening, and then we start talking, and it's like, there's always a lot happening. Yesterday, I was like, I don't know how we're going to do a show. There's nothing to say, and then, yes, by the time we hang up the phone, we're like, I don't even know how we're going to fit all this in. Exactly. So you're going to bring us up to speed on the big uh, New Jersey info. New Jersey's over, and now there's all these grumblings. Two things. Wait, stuck over. Out to define me. over. I guess I should define. Well, the season is over. Yes. Is it over forever? No. Oh, you don't think so? I don't think so. It's still making the network too much money. And it's still one of the franchises that makes money. So recently, there's two things. One, Melissa has come out and said that, you know, if producers want to go in a dark and toxic route, that they'll bring Teresa back. And if they do, that's just a show that she's not interested in being a part of. Now, do we think that Melissa Gorger or anyone else on The Real Housewives of New Jersey is going to resign on their own? No. And I think this was like she was getting ahead of the story. So let her say something before Teresa says something. Right. So I feel like it was like almost an opening salvo, so to speak. Or, yes, like if Teresa is invited back, Melissa could say, well, remember I said I didn't want to be a part of this show, and that's why I'm not there. Exactly. I think it was laying the groundwork for whatever decision she makes. If they both come back and it's super dark and toxic, she could be like, I told you it was going to be dark and toxic. Yes. It gives her, you know, it also gives her an, an escape exit an emergency exit if it gets too crazy during the season. Yes. And there's this other rumor now, too, that like they have called a truce and they've worked it out to save both of their jobs. Now, I call bullshit on this because I, when, when would this, Teresa's been on vacation, like when did Well, they, they do talk? have phones and texts. They do have phones I mean, and texts. But I know from some reliable sources, which will remain nameless, that this is not true. You really? never really know, but I know. I You never really know, but I know. Right. I like that. But I do think it could be fantastic for both of them to keep it going. Yeah, but it's like... is that, Are either of them being offered their own show? No, but there's a lot of talk of that. Okay, well then that's... Do we... But maybe they're getting their own show together. See, I think they're nice. both going to... I think it's just so good for both of them, and it keeps them both in the headlines and... I don't think either of them wants to give up that level of power, quote unquote, and fame and money. I was going to say the salary ain't bad. No, this no, but going from toxic to oh, Haley and Justin had their baby, Jack Blues Bieber. It's going to be all I can think of is like this kid's going to have good genes. This kid is going to have great genes. There's always that chance that someone gets all the recessive genes. Mm. So it won't look like Haley or Justin. God. It does happen. I can't, it does happen. I mean, I can think of some examples. We won't. So can I, I but say we're not, gonna, we're not going to say that out loud. But you but know is, what? I think in a relationship that everybody was doubting, they've hung in there. Justin seems like a tortured soul to me that, like, he needs Haley. Like, I think he's really happy with her. Mind you, I don't know. Even the worst genes of Justin Bieber, I think, are probably pretty good, if you want my opinion. Best wishes to Haley and Justin. I think it's very exciting. And I think that is a child that's very wanted and is going to be very loved. The first of many. He says he wants a lot. Wow. I just couldn't imagine that. Just even for myself, a lot is a scary thing to me. Anyway, uh, yeah. more, we're bouncing all around, more Real Housewives. Vicky has suddenly come out and discussing this massive health scare. Yeah, so she had, had some infection, like sepsis. I think she went into like the hospital. I don't really know the details of it, but basically it was something went from like zero to 100, and it's like an infection. And it sounds like pre- she, they said she had a 10% chance of surviving. Wow. And it sounds well, so like if it it's is, not over. Like if she it, seems tired. If it is sepsis, yeah. that can be incredibly dangerous. Okay, well, I, that's scary. That's very scary. Um, but there's all sorts of 
Orange County stuff going on. Justice for Shannon. She's having a good season. I have to. T- I t- I wasn't such a huge Shannon fan before this season, but. You know, who doesn't feel for Shannon? You know, her ex, John Jansen, is now dating Alexis. Alexis is on the show. They keep throwing Shannon's DUI back in her face. She's getting a really good edit. But even in interviews, like, she's doing a lot of interviews, and she's calm and cool. And, like, this is a different Shannon for me. She's just uh, taking, I want to say the high road, but just being like, if I'm rubber and you're glue, it bounces off me and sticks to you. Yes. It's just such a mature way to put it. I like that. And no, she is doing that, though. She's walking out of scenes like, I'm sorry, I'm going to excuse myself now. Like, what? Since when does it? Can you imagine Teresa saying, I'm sorry, I'm going to excuse myself now and walking out? No, but I think she's doing the right thing. Yes. And it's making her look good. Very good. She's coming again season. Okay. We got to talk about something that's just been huge that we've been waiting for, which is that Ben and Jen finally announced their divorce, which, you know, in the papers, it said they've been separated since April 26th, I believe was the day. So it's been a long time coming. Obviously, we've been hearing, you know, the hoofbeats coming. This is not news to anybody. But you and I were talking. I assumed that there was a prenup or that everybody has enough that nobody's going to put up a fight. But then I just saw... Again, which I didn't think about is what they've both done in the two years they've gotten mar- they've been married for. They don't have a prenup. That means it's all community property, including his new Ben's new production company back with Matt Damon. And Aww. she had the album, th- two or three movies, the documentary. So potentially it could get very, very messy. That's what I was saying yesterday. I was like, no, there's no prenup, which I don't even understand that. You know, like you hear, and we'll get into Taylor and Travis soon, but like you hear all this, that that's apparently what's taking so long. And it's like, rightfully so. I just want to know who will gain from this. Like, is it his production company? Did she do more during? Well, we don't even know if they're going to fight over it. We don't. We have This is all speculation. And it was basically just a list of everything that they are technically each entitled to. But again, we don't know the paperwork. We don't know, you know, how everything is set up. No, I have a weird, and like, when does it ever end amicably in Hollywood or anywhere? I just feel that they will just part ways. Right? I like, do too. I think, get the impression I think they're done with it. They're, they're both just going to walk away. Yeah. That's what I think. But we've seen, I mean, the Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie fight has been going on for how many years now? Right. And so you just don't know. No. I thought Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie were like soulmates before well, all. Is anyone really a soulmate? No. You know. I mean, I'm cynical, remember? Me too. So, yeah, but you're engaged. That doesn't mean I'm not cynical. <laughs> that's true. So I think that's a big one. But speaking of Ben Affleck, and Jennifer Lopez is right on the cusp of this. We have a bunch of new empty nesters, yes. celebrity empty nesters, starting with Violet Affleck. Yeah, she's at Yale. She started at Yale. Ben and Jen both took her. There were pictures of them both getting off the plane back in L.A. together. Which, that's so weird. But me. it just seems like they really seem to have a good co-parenting situation. And yes. we even saw this summer... Their daughter, uh, one of their kids in the Hamptons with J-Lo. Right. She's involved, too. First of all, Jennifer Gardner is like a saint. Because, I mean, she, I think the rumors were that was she was, like, guiding Jennifer Lopez on how to deal with Ben. And, yeah, like, right? Maybe. That's I don't think. Saint. I feel like any animosity Jennifer Gardner and Ben Affleck had seems to have evaporated. Yeah. Because I don't think it, there, there was a lot of love. I don't think it was so amicable. No. At she's the beginning. With someone new. And he, well, he's been with a few new people. But I do think that there some, seems to be some kind of really good co parenting or whatever it yeah. is. But it was fascinating that their daughter was with Jennifer Lopez in the Hamptons. That's the part that to me I don't really understand. But. 
Okay. I think there's something great about that. You do? And that makes me feel like, in some level, as much as I'm sure people were unhappy with how things were working out, it makes me feel like they kind of tried to keep it, it, it civil. The kids out of it. And keep the kids out of it. And now there's relationships between all of the stepkids, and you don't really want to, I would assume, rip them apart. No, but this is, they both do seem angry at each other, though, based on the, we haven't really seen anything except pictures, but the way they're carrying each other, like themselves. Don't they seem angry at each other? Yeah, well, nobody uh, seems happy. No. None of them seem happy, except for kind of, you know, Jennifer Gardner, who's got all of her little um, funny YouTube stuff and online stuff and the fake cooking show. She seems to be having a great summer. I mean, I'll keep it positive, but I think J-Lo just needs to take, you know, the rest of the year to be a single woman. Okay, but she loves being in love. I know, but But she loves being, this. but Elizabeth Taylor once said, if I love them enough to sleep with them, I love them enough to marry them. Okay, well... J-Lo is, I guess, on that track. On that track. Yeah. But we, we digressed from we digress. Celebrity Empty Nesters. The other big one that went off to school uh, was Surrey Cruz going to Carnegie Mellon. Yes, and I read, I guess, Tom Cruise is paying for the yes, whole thing. Yes, that so. that was part of their divorce was he will pay for all education. They have no contact. I heard Surrey is going by a different last name Yes, at school. If that ain't it. Fuck you to your father. You well, yeah. And what's one of Angelina's children just did? Just that? did that too. They're all dropping pit. Interesting. Well, I mean, I don't really understand though what happened. To, I mean, not to digress, what happened with Surrey and Tom? Like, I don't. Well, really... he's a Scientologist, and yes. they left, and That's she is not where the kids okay. with Nicole Kidman, the two adopted ones stayed in Scientology, which is why Nicole Kidman basically has no relationship with them. Man, okay, now I know. By the way, I am up for adoption for Tom Cruise anytime. You'll have to fight me for that. Yeah, you can I mean, adopt me, anything. I wouldn't be, I would take Nicole and Keith. That, that, yeah, they, they you know what, if any, Oprah, but see, oh God, yeah. remember I have two dead parents. So technically I I am an orphan and could be adopted. Okay, so you go before me is what you're saying. Yeah, That's pretty fair. much. But the That's problem fair. is I have a child, which means there's... It's, what if I could get someone like an Oprah who doesn't have a child? Generational wealth. See, I'm not stupid. She'll have to adopt you and your child, though. Yeah, generational wealth. I, I come alone. I, I have no one. Uh, some of the other kids, uh, uh, Seinfeld's son... Moved into Duke, which is kind of ironic since I believe it was at the Duke graduation that they all booed Jerry. Yep. And now his son is a freshman. That could be a little awkward. A little awkward, but what a good school. Probably oh. the best school he got into, right? So well, he could have gone into a bunch, but a great school. And uh, Gwyneth. Gwyneth. Yale. The Brad stepdaughter Paul, Chance, yeah. is at Yale. Yale did some hardcore celebrity recruiting this year, Yale clearly. I mean, who says no to Yale? No one. Hate well, in Connecticut, it's not bad. No, but I do know people, I know someone who said no to Yale and Harvard to go to Penn. Really? Yeah. In your class? In my class. Or was that you? Uh, no, that was uh, not <laughs> me. <laughs> was it you? No, it was someone, um, was he, no, my year, and it came down to who was going to give him the most money. Okay, that makes sense. Right. But I'm like, really? Well, I mean, Penn isn't uh, anything to sneeze or turn your nose up at. No, it's not. Um, Ivy League, darling. Please. Taylor Swift's annual Labor Day party. It used to be the July 4th party. It seems to have become the Labor Day party because it is also in celebration of one of her besties, Blake, her birthday. Birthday. And yes. I don't think Blake's having a great moment. No, she's not. She is, she, it, you asked me, do you think she's the next one to be canceled in Hollywood? And I was thinking about this. No. She's not going to be canceled because of Ryan. Yes, that's a good point. I mean, they just, I don't know where they were on vacation. They were packing on the PDA. You know, so That was say, at Taylor's. Oh, well, there Those you go. Those are the pictures. And we're not like making out on the, okay. ba on the balcony, the whole thing. 
And he really, I really believe that. Like, he's, I think, in love with her. Like, they have found each other. Oh. Even though you don't believe in soulmates, and I don't believe in soulmates. But no, they're, I think they're an ex- they're exceptionally happy. I think they connect on humor. They have yeah. four kids. I mean, they're both legitimately in it. But Blake, what should have been a great moment with the movie, the new movie, and supposedly I haven't, she's supposed to be great in it, has become a complete and total shit show. Yes, which started with Justin Baldoni and like that they never got along and then right the products that she's like mentioning, which you and I have talked about this. I'm all, I mean, I'm not one to talk because I plug myself wherever I go. Oh, of course, but the movie is about domestic violence. Yes. And at some time you and your team have to step back and say, let's, we need to be serious. She got all the play for all of her products coming out of uh, Deadpool and Wolverine because they really came out back to back. At one point, I mean, that's what I would assume my team would say to me because I'm the first one to say, you want to buy this? I mean, I, I get that 100%. But what has not helped her cause is some old interviews have come up that are not flattering. Right, like this is gone from like you didn't get along with Justin to you promoted products to like we're uncovering everything now. Exactly, and it's interesting that this is all coming out. And again, the backlash. So it was the reporter who posted, and I quote, this is the interview that almost made me qu- uh, quit my job, which is for was the Woody Allen movie with Blake and Parker Posey, and it is, you just cringe. You cringe. You cringe. You have to look it up. It is awful. Like, my heart went out to this girl, and I sat there, and I thought, what would I say? But I think she was so shocked that she didn't know what to say. And then there was the interview about the movie where she was trying to be funny and what she came off saying about domestic violence and if people wanted to talk to her about it it she was trying to be funny and it came off flippant it came off pretty flippant where she's like what do you mean come up to me in person like do you want my address do you want to geotag me location share it i don't know how that was not supposed to be flippant no and i know they're all trying to say oh she was being funny and she tried to pivot Again, I think there's been so many miscalculations about her, how she's presenting, promoting this movie, and trying to tie everything to it has gotten really, it was bad decisions were made, but also, yes. are we hitting Taylor Swift and her squad saturation? Maybe. I mean, you cannot get away, first of all, so I wanted for all the Swifties come for me. What Taylor has pulled off is phenomenal. Someone told me today there's more dates on this Eras tour. It's not but over. It's what she has done and pulled off, and the work ethic is amazing. But between her and her girlfriend, Blake and Gigi, Gigi is dating Bradley Cooper. Yeah. We all know that Taylor and Travis are together. And literally, I feel like there's just so much oversaturation with that whole group. I think it's time for a break. And then also we go back to Deadpool and Wolverine, right? But they did make history, which is a husband and wife having the number one and number two box office hits ever. Back to the same time. So, like, they're having a really great moment and a bad moment. He'll stand by her no matter what. Oh, that's not even part of the conversation. But that must be nice. But I think that she, that with her and this movie and the absolute bungling of the way she's presenting herself in this particular project, I think the oversaturation was the tipping point. Yeah, I I agree, and like I don't think she'll be canceled. Oh God, but no! She's definitely just people are looking because then I saw something the other day which I was mostly intrigued by, like you know 
her Gossip Girl co-stars. Like, they follow Leighton Meester, but they don't follow her. And I'm like, oh, I, I'd like to do a deep dive on this. Yeah, and there's been a lot of talk that, but again, we hear all the time that so-and-so doesn't like so-and-so, and so-and-so doesn't like so-and-so. And that gets old fast. But this is not a great moment for her personally, but it did not stop her from going to the big giant Labor Day party in Rhode Island or Blake's birthday extravaganza. And what uh, and Travis, obviously, front and center in all of this. He is he's gonna be part of American Horror Story with Ryan Murphy and then has two other major I know he has a game show. Okay. Apparently there's something else that neither of us can remember, and it was just announced that New Heights, his podcast with him and my favorite human being ever, Jason Kelsey, his brother, just got sold for a hundred million dollars. So Taylor must be congratulating him today. Still nothing compared to her. No, but is nothing compared to her? Is this like not the, really the podcast, but like now he's going to be in these movies? Like, is he going Hollywood? Is he going to remain into her, or are we having a big change? I know you you're going to say that on the court fields, whatever it is, he plays on a field. That yes, I know, that yes. he is the tailor. I know you're going to tell me. Yes, he is. But he is. It's the, still, is he going to change? The question. I'm worried. The question is. Is she going to get sick of it? Because now he's, granted, he's gone during the season, but is is she going to get sick of it? She, for all of it, never strikes me as a Hollywood girl. Yeah, I know. She doesn't strike me as one either. You know, in the sense of she, I don't think she, she has a beautiful house here, the old Warner estate. But you never really feel like she is here. You feel like she's in Nashville or New York, which seems to be her primary residence. You see her in New York. You know, you hear, you see pictures. Right. She's out at the restaurant. She's everywhere. And you don't really see that no. here. No. But you got to wonder, Is she, I think if one of them's going to get sick of it, it's going to be her. For as much as she is loving and seems so happy sort of living this relationship out loud, much more than her past ones, like with Joe Alwyn, that was six years, and you have like three pictures of them together. Is she going to get tired of it? She might. Or is she living, which I think, that her high school fantasy? It's all good, though. But when you want someone to be there for you when you come off stage in Australia and they are filming their own TV show, it could. The dynamics could change. That or she might be taking a break, which I would not be surprised. And rightfully so. Oh, like, take more than break. deserved. More like, than deserved. So now, have you heard anything? You heard that they're struggling with a prenup? The rumor is that's part of why he hasn't proposed. And, like, once they work this out, he's ready to propose. That on both sides, they want to make sure that it's an, like, I am all for prenups. Oh, my God. Like, how? Right? They have to. You See, I don't think to. I don't think that he's going to do anything unless they have it as a private. There will be no announcement till after football season, because he is very um, much aware that he has to be with his team in the sense of when they won the Super Bowl. He, you know, they congratulated in this and they were hugging and kissing, and he said to her, and they have the audio, "I need to go be with the guys." So I think he's not going to pull that kind of distraction because he knows it's been distraction enough. And the season starts what now? Like yes. September? Yes. And goes till December? No. January? January, February. February, okay. depending was, on the date of the Super Bowl. I was close. You know what? I am impressed. Maybe he'll be in the Super Bowl and then at the Super Bowl afterwards we'll get down and propose. I see. I don't think he's wired like that. Really? I think he lets it be the whole team's thing. So but I could be completely that. wrong. I've been known to be completely wrong in the past. Well, I hope it works out for them. I don't know how those two crazy kids, right? Like we're just you know they just need our concern, of course. Yes, I can't wait for them to come to ask for our permission. Yeah, we're giving it to them. Have a wonderful month. We Can have see a lot. You're going to see me next month. I'm yeah. going to see you next month, and we'll yeah. have all sorts of stuff because everything's going back into production. I can't wait. There's going to be new TV shows. Uh, We're going to have so much to talk about. Traders is coming back. Drew Barrymore's show got picked up again. Not shocking. Of course, it's a one, it's a it's wildly successful show. Kelly Clarkson's coming back. They're all coming back. All coming back. Uh, Traders, yes. Yes to Traders. Yes. We have to watch every minute. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, everyone. Absolutely. Hope you enjoyed our, basically, the our end of summer roundup. Hopefully everyone had a good summer.
I hope so. Did you? Yeah, I did. I'm a Mr. Fall. Hampton. I'm no, wait, I just like, I don't even want to hear about it, Mr. I live in the Hamptons and Justin Timberlake got arrested right outside my house. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And you know what? It's just so relaxing there. As I was saying when I walked in here, not that I'm not happy to be here, I already feel the stress of Los Angeles. I've been here for about three days and I, the stress is here. Yeah. So it was a good summer. Yes. Good. I hope you had a good summer too. I did. I did. That's it.